unto thee it was shown, that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is God, there is none else beside him. Out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice, that he might instruct thee, and upon earth he showed thee his great fire, and thou heardest his words out of the midst of the fire. And because he loved thy fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them, and brought thee out in his sight with his mighty power out of Egypt, to drive out nations from before thee greater and mightier than thou art, to bring thee in, to give thee their land for an inheritance as it is this day. Know therefore this day, and consider it in thine heart, that the Lord, he is God in heaven above, and upon the earth beneath there is none else. The most embarrassing thing that can happen to a group of people that is chosen by the Most High, as well as called after the Most High, is when the heathens they live among who serve idols and gods that cannot do anything for them, say to a holy people, where is your God? The scripture said the heathens God are gold and silver. Gold and silver is another way of referring to money. The workers of iniquity in high places made sure to control the money worldwide. The scripture said, you cannot serve the most high in money. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Because the workers of iniquity in high places love money, it should be clear to the indigenous black people that the workers of iniquity do not serve the Most High. The word of the Most High said they can't serve him and money. The workers of iniquity choose money. That is why they make sure the indigenous black people have as little money as possible. Money is the god of the beast system. Money equals power in the beast culture, especially in the last days. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The workers of iniquity in high places can easily be bribed with money. Little do they know the power they obtain with money is an illusion. The Most High has the ultimate power and is in control of all of his creatures in creation. The scriptures went on to say the gods the heathens worship and serve are demons, the fallen angels. The word of the Most High said the idol gods of the heathens are not alive and they are useless. The gods of the heathens are made with man's hands. They cannot speak, see, or smell. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Neither is there any breath in their mouths. They that make them are like unto them, so is every one that trusteth in them. Israelites, as you have heard for yourselves, that the gods of the heathens are useless. The heathens will worship anything that they believe will give them power. Money give them access and power in the beast system, therefore they serve money. They serve the fallen angels because they have been deceived with the illusion of power the Satans have given them. The other species of mankind and the heathens will worship anything they believe is supernatural. With all of the idol gods the heathens serve, and as dedicated they are to their gods, none of the heathens should live in poverty. Yet there are only a few that control the world's wealth. Out of the more than 200 countries in this world, less than 10 are superpower nations. The rest of the nations are third world countries that are enslaved to the superpower nations. The faith of the people who live in the impoverished nations are strong, yet the gods they serve cannot rescue them out of the chains and poverty they have been in for centuries. The word of the Most High revealed to us that there is no other God but the Most High, the God of Israel. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee. Though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Israelites, you heard in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 5 and 6, that there is no other God but the Most High. 
the scriptures went on to reveal important information about his people. The scriptures specifically said his people do not know him. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. The Most High was speaking to his people, the Israelites, in chapter 45 in the book of Isaiah. Verse 4 said, For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel my elect, I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. If the people of the Most High truly know their God, the scriptures wouldn't say his people don't know him. The Israelites have a history of idol worship. Despite the people of the Most High witnessing for themselves the power of the only living creator of all, they allow the pagans they live among influence them to forsake their God to serve useless idols that cannot do anything for them. Idolatry has been the sin that caused the people of the Most High to suffer from generation to generation. The Most High said, His people have committed two evils against Him. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. When the Israelites serve other gods, the scriptures call it evil. The Israelites have a history of forsaking the Most High. The people of the Most High have a track record of following the heathens they live among. The elders during Samuel's generation gathered together and said to Samuel that they wanted to be like the heathen nations. They opened their mouths and said to Samuel, give us a king like the heathens. And all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old. And thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. The Israelites in Samuel's generation thought a king like the heathens would help their hopeless conditions. They thought a king like the heathens would save them. Just as they have placed their trust in the heathens, they live among for centuries to save them from their suffering. While our ancestors are expressing to Samuel to give them a king like the heathens, in their hearts, they were rejecting the Most High as their leader. When the Most High noticed the request of the elders of Israel displeased Samuel, the scripture said, the Most High said to Samuel, it is not you they are rejecting, it's me they have rejected. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. The Israelites have a long history of forsaking the Most High. Even in this generation, many Israelites and indigenous black people have forsaken the Most High for the gods of the heathens in religion. The consequences of the holy people who establish a covenant with the creator of all and turn around, forsake the one true God. These people will live a life full of curses, plagues, trials, and tribulations. The Most High has warned his people of what will happen to them if they choose to follow other gods and forsake the covenant. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Our ancestors stood before the Most High, made a covenant with the Creator of all. The Israelites stood in the presence of the Most High with their wives and children, all the leaders of our people and all of their possessions. They heard the blessings the Most High would bestow upon them if they followed the statutes and the commandments. They heard the curses that would hunt them down if they disobeyed the covenant. Nothing was a secret when they established the covenant with the Most High that day. Our ancestors were aware of the consequences. The Most High made it known to them. However, our ancestors, as well as the strangers that live among the Israelites, stood before the Most High, opened their mouths, and established the covenant. Ye stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God, your captains of your tribes, your elders, and your officers, with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger that is in thy camp, from the hewer of thy wood unto the drawer of thy water. 
that thou shouldest enter into covenant with the Lord thy God, and into his oath, which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day, that he may establish thee today for a people unto himself, and that he may be unto thee a God, as he hath said unto thee, and as he hath sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The Most High did not trick our ancestors into a covenant with him. He laid everything out for his people to make good decisions. The day our ancestors stood before the Most High and established the covenant for the Most High to be their God and they will be his people, the Most High promised to transfer the everlasting covenant he made with Abraham to Jacob and his descendants. The day the Most High transferred the covenant, every generation that will be a part of the Israelite bloodline stood there with the generation that received the transferring of the everlasting covenant. Our generation stood there with them. Although we were not yet conceived in our mother's womb, we stood there with them. The scriptures confirm. Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath but with him that standeth here with us this day before the Lord our God, and also with him that is not here with us this day. Covenants travel from one generation to the next. That is how the everlasting covenant the Most High made with Abraham our father continued to travel throughout our bloodline. Generational curses travel through a bloodline just like covenants. Today, many Israelites are proud to descend from Jacob. Some Israelites are so proud that they are changing their names and announcing to the world that they are Jacob's seed. With the Israelites in this generation proudly boasting about their Israelite heritage and accepting being an Israelite, you are accepting everything that comes with being an Israelite, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The covenant is being transferred from one generation to the next. Now that many Israelites have accepted their family's legacy, the scriptures prophesied about his people who is living in the land of their captivity and how they would serve other gods. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. The scripture said the gods his people would serve in the land of their captivity are the useless gods of the heathens. Every single Israelite who was in religion served other gods in the land of their captivity. Religion do not serve the Most High. Religion do not know the Most High. Religion served the Satans as gods. Every Israelite who was once a member in the house of bondage, the church, or any other form of religion in the beast system served other gods in the land of their captivity. The people of the Most High did exactly what the scriptures prophesied that they would do. I don't want to hear anyone say, I didn't know. The scripture said, my people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. Not knowing do not excuse you from sin. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Therefore my people are gone into captivity, because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. The scripture said in the book of Jeremiah, as well as many other books in the Bible, that the people of the Most High has forsaken him. The book of Jeremiah said it was your own fault that you discontinued from the heritage the Most High has given you. The book of Jeremiah went on to say that our ancestors have forsaken their God. The Most High had to plead with his people in multiple generations to return to him. The Most High used the prophet Jeremiah to ask his people, what iniquity they have found in him for them to forsake him and run after vanity. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and are become vain? The Most High has pleaded with his people repeatedly in the scriptures. A lot of our people turned away from the Most High to serve other gods, as well as to follow the heathens. For some strange reason, the indigenous black people have a fascination with the other species of mankind. 
Some Israelites and indigenous black people love the heathens more than they love the most high. They are willing to do anything to be accepted by the heathens. The same heathens they admire are helping the Satans facilitate their downfall. The scriptures said they have conspired against you and they are confederate against you. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. But they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The reason the heathens can boldly say to you, where is your God? They know that they have successfully disconnected majority of the Israelites and indigenous black people from the most high. Idolatry is a great sin. Idolatry is forsaking the most high. The scripture said sin separates you from the most high. When the people are separated from their protector, provider, and their leader, what do you believe will happen to them? But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Israelites, our people is not suffering in the land of their captivity and throughout history simply because of the enmity between the woman's seed and the serpent seed. The main reason the Israelites have been suffering throughout their generation is because of their sins. The people of the Most High have forsaken him repeatedly. The suffering our people have endured throughout their generation is the result of judgment that was placed on them from the Most High. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one. For the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto thee. A lot of Israelites wear the generational curses like a badge of honor. They proudly say they are under the curses to identify themselves as Israelites. Many Israelites use the curses as an excuse to remain in sin. I don't know how many times I have to remind our people that death and life is in the power of the tongue. As a man think it, so is he. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. In one breath, some Israelites assign their suffering to the curses. If the curses took over our people, this would conclude sin was found. The Most High is not going to allow the curses to destroy his people if they were innocent. The curses overtook our people throughout their generations because their iniquity has multiplied. Some Israelites say the suffering of the Israelite people comes from the heathens hating them. The Most High have vessels made for honor and some for dishonor. The heathens indeed hate you and a lot of you fall into their traps because you want their approval. A lot of Israelites and indigenous black people are wicked. The Most High will use the wrath and hatred the heathens have towards you to purge the wicked of his people. The Most High said in his words that all the wicked of his people will be destroyed. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword which say, The evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. A lot of Israelites in the awakening see the violence towards their people and throughout history and allow their emotions to get the best of them. Let me remind you what the word of the Most High said. The Most High said, cry out loud and spare not. Show my people their transgressions. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. The Most High want you to know your transgressions for you to repent. The word of the Most High said, narrow is the road that leads to life. A few will find that road. Broad is the road that leads to destruction. Many will find that road. The wicked outnumber the righteous. That is why only a remnant will return to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. Because the signs of the times are more obvious, some Israelites believe the suffering our people endured throughout history has always been Jacob's trouble, the great tribulations. Jacob has always been in trouble because of sin. 
However, all the suffering the Israelites have endured throughout their generation has nothing to do with the great tribulation that is coming to the generation that will be alive at that time. The great tribulation is going to be the wrath of the Satans towards the people of the Most High. The Israelites are suffering today and in the past because iniquity was found in you. As the Israelites and indigenous black people run to idols and disobey the Most High, they will suffer. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. The Most High said to his people in the book of Amos, You only have I known out of all the families of the earth. I will punish you for all your iniquities. A lot of Israelites and indigenous black people refuse to repent. Most indigenous black people have put their trust in the gods of the heathens instead of repenting. The Most High said to this generation and to the coming generations, If my people, who are called by my name, would humble themselves, repent, pray, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them and heal their land. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. The great tribulation that is coming is nothing like our people have experienced before. It will be a time of great distress. The scriptures went on to say there will never be a time like that again. For then there shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. Oppression and suffering is all that the indigenous black people know, that when the scriptures is warning them about a time that will be even worse, they can't perceive the danger. The great tribulation, as known as Jacob's trouble, is far worse. It has yet to happen. Who can imagine anything worse than the slave trade? Or how the other species of mankind brutally killed our people and take a selfie in front of the body? Nor could we imagine how the spiritual wickedness in high places attack the people with a biochemical in the form of a virus, then give them a vaccine as the antidote to finish them off. If that is not wickedness, I don't know what is. However, Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation, will be far worse. The signs of the times are here to warn you and to prepare you. Israelites, do not let those who study the word without the Holy Spirit mislead you. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Ask the Most High for a double portion of the spirit of discernment. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The Most High said in the book of Jeremiah that he would plead with his people. He will plead with the children's children. The present awakening is a plea from the Most High to save his people. Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. The awakening is happening because a generation has arrived that had enough. A generation has been born that wants to know the Father. A generation has arrived that wants to know the truth. The suffering this generation has endured has caused them to remember the blessing and the curses the Most High has put before his people on that great day when they stood before him and made a covenant. The very covenant that this generation stood before the Most High in spirit to be a partaker of that covenant. After all these years, a generation has arrived that yearn to know the Father that they have ignited the prophesied awakening. And it shall come to pass. When all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity, and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the utmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. Israelites, you didn't remember yourselves when you were infatuated with all of your lovers, 
When your lovers turn on you and the Most High increase the sword against his people for their treason, that is when you remember yourselves. A trial and tribulation has many purpose with the Most High. The suffering many of you detest has caused you to dig deeper to find the real God of Israel. It took the awakening to happen for the people of the Most High to finally return to serve the Father. Prior to the Great Awakening, all of us was in the pagan church serving what we thought was the God of our fathers. Turned out we were serving Baal and many other devils. Because we were in idolatry, we had no help from the Most High. The word of the Most High said a day is coming when his people will stop calling him Baal. That day happened when the awakening started. And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishai, and shalt call me no more Balai. For I will take away the names of Balaam out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. Up until the awakening, majority of the people of the Most High didn't know where their God was. If they knew where their God was, none of them would have been in the house of bondage, the church, or any form of religion seeking his face. The Israelites and the indigenous black people have been crying out to the gods of the heathens for hundreds of years. The heathens managed to keep their foot on their necks. The heathens did not have an advantage over you because they are righteous. They ruled over you because they know who you are. In addition, they know about the blessing and the curses. These people have stolen your identity worldwide. As long as you cried out to their gods, they know no one would help you. Every time our people forsake the Most High, they were defeated. Yet ye have forsaken me, and served other gods. Wherefore I will deliver you no more. Go, and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. Israelites, I hope you are beginning to see the awakening is about repentance and serving the Most High in the spirit and in truth. You're in the land of your captivity, serving a sentence. A judgment that has been decreed against the people of the Most High a long time ago. Until the time of that judgment is served, you're always going to face trials and tribulations. You live in a hostile environment. Some of you seem to forget. In order for you to dwell safely in the land of your captivity, your ways must please the Most High. In order for your ways to please the Most High, repentance is required. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Israelites, always remember a trial or any pain and suffering the people of the Most High endure, it has many purpose. The violence against our people is not pleasant to watch. However, the Most High will purge the wicked of his people from among the remnant, it is written. The signs of the times are here to let us know where we are before the great day of the Most High. When Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation arrived, that is a sign that our deliverance is finally here. The sign of more suffering in the form of Jacob's trouble is not pleasant, but it must happen. The word of the Most High said soon after the great tribulation period is over, the archangel Michael will stand up for our people. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. After the tribulation period, the day of the Most High is here. The day of the Most High is when the Most High will judge the nations for their wickedness and how they treated his people. We will not be here for that day. We will dwell safely in our own land while the Most High judge the heathens. The scriptures warn the day of the Most High is a terrible day. The scriptures said not to long for the day of the Most High. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. All things written must be fulfilled. At one point in time, we did not know our God nor serve him. Now that the awakening is here, we're getting to know our father and serving him the right way. The pain and suffering our people have endured throughout history occurred when the Israelites have fallen into sin and forsook the covenant. As soon as the people cried out to the Most High and repent, he was there to help his people. Israelites, do not be ignorant to the reason our people face many trials and tribulations throughout history. 
You're paying the price for your iniquities. Judgment starts with the people of the Most High first. But the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? The heathens have yet to be judged. Some heathens believe because they have not been held accountable for their multitude of sins, they believe the Most High is on their side and they're favored by the Most High. The strong delusion the Most High has put on the heathens in the last days is working. Let the heathens boast now and blaspheme our God. Their judgment for their iniquities will happen on the day of the Most High, a great and terrible day. As for the people of the Most High, repent. Trust the Most High and lean not to your own understanding. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you in all your ways. The Most High did not forsake his people. His people forsook him. The time has come for you to know your God and serve him in the spirit and in truth. Israelites, do not be afraid to serve the Most High. Your salvation is closer than you think. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them? As the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law? which I set before you this day. Only take heed to thyself, and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons, and thy sons' sons. <laughs>